to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Speaker after speaker, like Pastor shared, the Lord has been unveiling mysteries i'll just share one scripture and then we'll pray um, please keep standing i would like to continue from where pastor left off ephesians chapter 3. paul would start from verse 5. paul is teaching the church in ephesus now theologically speaking the book of ephesians is believed to contain the highest church truth it was the zenith of Paul's apostolic ministry because it was a territory that was also a business hub so they understood kingdom under the influence of a woman and a goddess called Diana and so the people were not ignorant people they were people who were learned so when Paul began to bring his exegesis of truth he started by presenting the basis for his apostolic confidence that lest you think I am proud, let me tell you that there is a basis how that by revelation he made this mystery known unto me. And the Bible says, verse 5, that in other ages it was not known to the sons of men. As it is now revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. Read on please. Next verse. That the Gentiles should be the fellow heirs and so on and so forth. Please let's go to verse 8. We'll stop somewhere at 9 or 10. It says, Unto me, who am less than the least of all the saints, is this grace given. It is a grace. Please listen. It is not just a desire. It is more than that. There is a grace allocated for these kinds of possibilities. He says, the grace was given to me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Nine. This is it. This is the grace. And to make all men see. Stop. There is a grace that can make men see. Please understand this. There is a grace that can help men hear. But there is a grace that can make men see. It is more than utterance. It is more than oratory. It's an activity of the Holy Spirit upon a man and then upon a people that when you are under the influence of that grace, it causes you to see. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower that I will see what the Lord will say. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. That's how much he loves and desires you. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Please be patient, we'll sit shortly. Paul was still talking to the church in Ephesus. And then he said, having their understanding darkened, 4.18. It says being alienated from the life of God. So the problem is understanding that when a man's understanding is darkened, he can be alienated from the potential that the reality of the life of God brings. And then he says because of the ignorance that is in them. 
lift your voice and pray light oh god light open my eyes Kenya, there are people of prayer in this place. Can you lift your voice and let's pray? Open our eyes, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Thank you again and again. Um, I truly honor your pastor for many things. Among them, is the keenness of his understanding as far as the strategic nature of kingdom advance is concerned you know one of the things that has plagued the body of christ for many years is that we have zeal and we have the fortitude to press into spiritual things but the spiritual intelligence are located for an effective um, an effective kingdom advance I think that most believers do not have the blueprint God's methodologies as far as kingdom advance is concerned so here and there we have various versions of shadow boxings and guessing we guess different methodologies as to what we think God demands from us and as to what we think should be done to see that the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our God and so we have all kinds of formula all kinds of strategies we continue to invent and it's very clear that many of them have either failed or have been ineffective in revealing the reality of the life the culture the grace of Christ and so this conference seeks to be able to synergize our understanding to bring us to a point where we not only know God and we not only understand his ways but the strategies for kingdom advance is given to us if we lose that understanding then we did not benefit from the conference hallelujah praise the Lord and this will demand many things from us number one is the ability to allow the intelligence of the spirit rise above our intellect rise above our experiences oftentimes when the word of god is about to come like this we filter the word of god from the lens of our experiences we filter the word of god from the lens of our intellectual prowess which is which is good except for the fact that spiritual things can only be spiritually discerned are we together now so in as much as our intelligence is fruitful and there's a place for it um, but when it has to do with the communication of the spirit we must be able to trust the speakings of God above and beyond our intellect there is a realm in the dealing of God where both the learned and the unlearned have to submit to the Holy Spirit so that we do not fall victims of interpreting spiritual things from the lens of our education from our understanding now don't get me wrong i don't insult all these bodies of knowledge but i am saying that because the wisdom of god comes from above it comes from a dimension that will require this understanding that it is true that i have understanding but it says do not lean on your own understanding we have to tap into a dimension of wisdom that is higher than what we have known are we together isaiah chapter 29 we won't be long for this session this is i'm just starting with us so just to establish something uh building on what the great servants of god men and women of god have done in this place isaiah 29 and then verse 10 and 11 let me show you a scripture that changed my life <clears throat> praise the 
praise the Lord have I lost it I don't know I think I, I lost it somewhere I wanted to show you a scripture that says the vision is become unto them like a book that is sealed and that they brought that book to one who is learned and he said I cannot read it for it is sealed and then they brought it to one who is not learned and he said I'm not even learned that was the scripture I wanted to take us to that a, a point in the spirit listen very carefully must come when both the learned and the learned and unlearned would have to depend on the wisdom of the Holy Spirit this is such a convergence Spirit of God we need you we are not ashamed to declare that without you we are only wasting our time come and grant us light you are the light of God we receive that illumination in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1. When Jesus walked upon the earth, the ministry of Jesus is very interesting because remember that Jesus came as a revelation of the Father's intent. The Bible calls him the Logos of God. The Logos means the thoughts of God seeking expression. So Jesus came as a correction of our perception about the Father. Until Jesus came, there were many things about God we were not clear of because we had to depend on the revelations of prophets and they were limited themselves. So there were many things that were attributed to God that was not God. There were many things that they robbed God of that was God. So Jesus came as a correction so that by looking at his life, we would compare and contrast. Are we together now? The Bible calls him the, the image of the invisible God. So when he walked upon the earth, he began to introduce to us a kingdom. It's amazing that Jesus did not just come to introduce to us an agenda. He brought the kingdom. He began to teach in what we call his beatitudes. And then he began to mentor the believers or the individuals who would later become the apostles of the Lamb alongside all those who cared to listen he began to show them that there was a kingdom please say kingdom very important the very foundation of the teachings of Jesus was not even just um, salvation from dead works as it were he began to introduce them to the reality of a kingdom and then he let them know that this kingdom um, is not within this fair alone and that there is a lord over that kingdom and began to culture the people to show them the ways the methodologies of the kingdom are we together now and when jesus died and resurrected he left the disciples now who would soon become apostles with a mandate acts chapter one please let's start from verse seven now i hope you know that prophecy the jews already had prophecy that one day there will be a restoration of all things are we together that they would be restored as a nation and so when they saw the invincibility of the ministry of jesus they perceived and thought he was the one who would dethrone caesar and herod are we together he would be the deliverer so they anticipated that was the reason why the disciples kept um falling for the propositions of jesus because they hoped that one day he would dethrone caesar dethrone herod that was why james and john connived with their mother remember to begin to lobby positions for them in advance because they saw the way jesus was going and they believed that he would conquer caesar so when jesus gave himself to be killed it was a shock and a disappointment they left their fishing they left their professions to follow a man who they believed would be their hero who would one day be king in the earth here and then as a reward they would have the privilege of occupying different cabinets and now jesus is giving himself to die leaving them in trouble that's why when he said i'm going they said you're not going anywhere you've caused trouble within a territory and you want to go it was not compassion they were not missing him they knew they were already in trouble are we together now and jesus said it is expedient that i go whilst you are afraid of what will happen in the earth realm there is an agenda that is bigger than this there is one who is coming he will be a continuation 
of what I am now to you. They, they didn't understand and they were not interested at all. So when Jesus died, they ran away. Are we together now? Yes. And um, Jesus is back to life. And then John 21 gives us the account. Peter looks at his colleagues and says, I go a fishing. Then they said, we go with you. And while they began to fish, they couldn't catch anything. Jesus stands by the seashore and says, little children, have you any catch? And then Peter, recognizing it was Jesus, he washed his net and came to him. And while they sat to eat, he said, Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? Then he said, feed my lamb, feed my sheep. And after all of that conversation, the Bible now takes us to the book of Acts, where when Jesus resurrected for a period of 40 days, he called on, isn't it amazing how purposeful Jesus is? I mean, who would resurrect from the dead and go back to a lecture hall? You resurrect from the dead and go to a media house. Everybody, finally, I came back to life. And Jesus said, there's no time for that. In 50 days, the earth is about to change. Something is coming. Guys, I did not finish the lecture before my death. Now that I'm back, there's no time for celebration. Come together. I need to teach you. There are things I would show you. And I have 40 days left. The Bible says he mentored them on the matters of the kingdom. Are we together? So when we get to verse 7, he makes a statement, Acts chapter 1 and verse 7. The disciples were interested in this. Will you at this point restore the nation of Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has put within his authority. Then verse 8 is where I want to build on. He says, but you shall receive power. If we can just have King James after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and then he says you shall be witnesses everybody say witnesses now remember he's speaking to his apostles and prophetically he's speaking to the church that will be birthed from this experience are we together he said you will receive power and the power will make you witnesses everybody please say witnesses he never said the power will make you men of god he never said the power will make you business people please follow me he never said the power will make you career people he never said the power will make you christians uh -uh. he said you will receive power and the proof that that power and the ministry of the Holy Spirit is upon you is that it will give you a new name and the name is that you will be a witness then he does not stop there he begins to define the geography of the witness he says you will be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem number one number two Judea number three Samaria and then number four, the uttermost part of the earth. I find this a waste of time. If you speak to a linguist, he would have just said you will be witnesses to me all over the world. I think that makes a lot of sense. Every time you don't understand scripture is because your mind is not allowing your spirit to see. You will be witnesses. So we're, we're working with this scripture now. Jesus is speaking to the people in 10 days he's about to leave and 10 days after the spirit will be coming upon them and he's saying you will receive power when the holy ghost comes upon you and that when that ability comes upon you it will turn you to become a witness a witness write that word down who is a witness a witness is a validator of a claim a witness is a validator of a claim the second thing I want you to write is that a witness is unnecessary until there was a prior contention over a claim you do not need a witness until there is someone who is contending with the validity of a claim that means that if we are at the court of law for instance and you make a claim and someone objects to it usually the judge will say do you have a witness are we together the witness has an assignment to convince the judge 
and to convince all and sundry that the claim is true now listen please because jesus is teaching here he's saying that the power of the holy ghost will come upon a people and that the assignment the jurisdiction of that power is to turn men to witnesses not men of god not businessmen not captains of industry not politicians he calls us witnesses hmm. are we together now yes so a witness is the validator of a claim that means the assignment of a witness is to insist until everyone is convinced that means it is within his power to employ every skill necessary to see to it that conviction is established over a matter if a witness fails to convince he is no longer a witness please follow me very carefully this is the dimension of christianity that has not been properly understood and so the average believer will tell you that he's born again to make heaven and that is right the average believer will tell you he's born again to be a businessman others will tell you he's born again to serve the purposes of the kingdom in ministry all of these things are right but they are only subsets of the real truth the name given to us now remember that believers are called many things in scripture are we together now we are called joint heirs we are called heirs with god we are called light we are called salt we are called ambassadors and one of the names that we have rejected is this name witness it's a name jesus himself is saying that there is a name that believers will have after their encounter with the holy spirit and his power and that that will turn them into witnesses please look up the concept of being a witness is very very important why because that would immediately suggest to you that there were many claims that jesus made on the earth while he walked and he did jesus said many things about the father for instance he spoke about the love of the father he spoke about the mercy of the father he spoke about the desire of the father to see all men saved are we together and jesus demonstrated it with his life but then he did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there is an adversary roaming around the horizon who has an assignment to thwart everything that is god are we together when you go to genesis chapter 3 please don't turn there for time's sake let me rush i hope you know that the book of beginnings um there is there is what we call in theology the law of first mention that means that the the initial context with which a word or a thought was introduced becomes the guiding line um, when interpreting that thought all over scripture are we together and so we see that satan comes to tempt the woman adam and his wife according to scripture and the basis of his temptation started when he heard what god said satan has nothing to do or say until he hears what god has said because his assignment is to thwart everything that is god so until god has spoken he has nothing to do so when he came to the eve of adam are we together he said what did god say and Eve said this is what he said and his next assignment became the subtlety of deception to say no God is trying to hide something etc etc it is still the formula that Satan continues to use now listen to me that everything God has said over man over creation becomes Satan's assignment to debunk everything i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness that becomes satan's assignment and like a painter please look up like a painter the 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 paint and the canvas that he will use to debunk that statement is man listen very carefully man being the zenith of god's creation is the greatest instrument to make a statement either by god or by satan 
when god wants to speak to creation and make it clear he uses man when satan wants to reply god and get to him he uses man so in any case man is in the middle of something that is more ancient than him follow me carefully we are taking this is a journey um are we together man the epicenter of god's desire man the pursuit of satan satan continues to pursue man because god wants man he's not exactly clear what is in man but he suspects that what is in man must be god now listen please everything that happens in the earth is a communication between god creation and satan the amplifier the picture the portrait is man let me give you an instance if a woman please respectfully so just listen if a woman is barren what does that mean it doesn't just mean she's not able to take in what does that mean let me tell you her barrenness is a letter from satan to god through man that i am using this entity to disprove something you have said are we together now remember don't forget what we're discussing we're discussing witnesses so the barrenness is a language it's not a condition satan is using man god's highest creation and the witnesses of that doom they are creation themselves the plants the animals i hope you know they are all alive they can see and they can hear and they are watching this display now god says do not withhold from a man when it is within your power to to do so and god says he's a benevolent god and here is a woman who is unable to take in satan uses her womb to write a letter to god and to be witnessed by creation are you that good and god is in heaven he needs a system of reply watch this sit down sit down sit down and while he's in heaven he's been misrepresented in this side of his kingdom and now he's at the mercy of another man watch this so when a miracle happens a miracle is more than just a sign and a wonder it's a reply from god to satan through man i am still god it is not just a demonstration of the anointing of a man of god alone this is a conversation between If you are unable to pay the fees of your children it is not a condition it is a language satan is using you and using your inability to demonstrate fatherhood are we together now and to spite god and his integrity so when a conference like this opens you up to the methodologies of the kingdom that makes for your blessing it's more than just a money mongering pursuit it's a reply from god you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you now listen and you shall be validators of my claims that everything i said there is an enemy in the horizon attempting to misrepresent all that i am and i am depending on you to show up and validate every claim now listen very carefully do, do, are we following so far witnesses witnesses john chapter 1 and verse 6 the primary revelation is not your being a man of god the primary revelation is not your being a businessman the primary revelation is not your being a politician now all those things only come in when the geography of your witness is defined john chapter 1 verse 6 there was a man 
sent from God look up he was a man sent from this is a mystery that the men you see are not born they are sent watch this we don't it, we believe angels are sent is that true we believe spirits are sent but we do not believe men are sent there was a man sent from god when he arrived the earth he had to be given a name so the disguise was john but the man was not john he was given an earthly name oh come on please kenya kenya are we together verse 7 the man came for a he was not a prophet you called him a prophet the bible does not say he was a prophet he was not even a baptist he was a come on read it we're bible believers when he came to the earth you described him as john the prophet other people said john the baptist and the bible is saying wrong you are carried away by the geography his assignment is a witness he came for a witness to bear witness to the light that through his witness men might believe so you call her a business mogul she's not a business mogul she's a woman sent when she arrived the earth she came through kenya and just because you called her pastor amanda you can think that oh she's just no 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 men forget about the earthly names is a disguise let's sit down god is recalibrating our spiritual understanding so that we are apostolic in our approach to christianity when john came heaven was so particular about his coming when his father wanted to be careless about prophecy he was made deaf and dumb so being deaf and dumb is not a demonic issue it's a strategy that can be used by anybody for the advantage of their agenda including god are you getting the point now let's pray in the spirit in one minute let's let's pray let's pray. we have to we have to ask god to assist us the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know we may know we may know please sit down are we together now it was not satan that made zechariah deaf and dumb it was a strategy to keep him silent because the anointing was on him and his speech could corrupt the program of God so he was quiet till he agreed with God so some things you may be calling delay it may not all be demonic is because you have not heard a message that if some things came to you without certain levels of spiritual understanding it will only add to sabotaging the purposes of God Please sit down blessed be the name of the lord is god helping us now the same came this scripture you see for the rest of your life never forget it john 1 7 this is the universal assignment of every believer we are a species of men disguised in the earth in earthen vessels but make no mistakes about it i know you call her your sister I know you call him your brother Jesus who is God the ancient of days was disguised in a body born of a virgin woman listen everybody when the demon saw him they said you are not 30 years old what are we seeing they looked through a 30 year old body and saw the ancient of days and he said keep quiet they said I mean you guys are calling this guy a 30 year old man this is the ancient of days and he said keep quiet because bodies can deceive let me tell you what we carry
predates even us it is ancient it is not some you do not measure what we carry just by our age we are a continuation we are receiving a button we are moved by influences we have not been taught what it is so you just know that you are a man of god and you carry tremendous influence it is not just that you are seeking god there is a program that is older than you that is influencing you and changing you to do and be things that until you are given spiritual understanding you will not know why you look at what pastor julian is doing and his dear wife you will think he's just the vision of a ministry is more than that until he's x-rayed from the lens of prophecy then you will hear god say there was a man sent from god are we together now he came to kenya god did not just say send them and then i'll think no 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 it was it was something that was intentional now watch this um, many of you know about the terrorism around Africa, especially our region. I come from Nigeria, and so the whole Boko Haram, and then Central Africa, and then ISIS, and so on and so forth. Let's use ISIS, we all know that. How many of you know that there are people today in the universities studying medicine, engineering? You call them doctors. They are not doctors. They are terrorists. Look up. From before their admission, they were told they know that there is a bigger cause but then they need influence over a certain space and so they decided to disguise themselves for seven years so while they are in the lecture hall with other doctors you believe a doctor is in the making but this guy wants to learn everything about how to create a poisonous substance that if possible can kill someone in a heartbeat and that labor of going to the university is not to get a job he is sponsored by an agenda that is bigger than that university. And so while he's sitting with the classmates, you will think that these are doctors in the making. But when a terrorist comes to visit the school and spots him, they know themselves. He will tell him, ride on, you are doing a great job. This is how we are on earth. Everybody looks at us, they call us 7.2 billion people. But when heaven looks at you, they see the signature of eternity upon your spirit. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. His name was Joshua Selman. There was a nation sent from God. When it arrived, the earth history coined out a name and gave it called Kenya. So you will think that is just a product of many historical uh, happenings to arrive. No, forget about the name. The prophecy is that you are a witness that the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that through him all men might believe one more scripture please revelations chapter 1 this was John who was in the Isle of Patmos the revelation of Jesus Christ which he gave unto his servant on the things that must happen he sent it and signified it to his angel let's go to verse 8 please for time's sake we have to rush we're reading from 8 I am Alpha and Omega Jesus is talking to John now I am the beginning and the end says the Lord who is who was who is to come the Almighty verse 9 I John your brother and companion in the tribulation and in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ was on the island which is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony some versions there will say witness next verse 10 it says I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and then he began to share all of those the key verse is verse 9 some versions say that he was there as a witness and then he heard God let me just rush it Jesus himself speaking and he called himself the faithful witness. Jesus calls himself the faithful witness. So not only is John a witness, Jesus himself says, I am not just savior. I am not just Lord. I am faithful witness. 
are you seeing that the spiritual names of believers is not just man of God please listen to me you have to understand this for every other teaching in this conference to really make sense you must understand that we are not just called to be doctors and engineers and bankers no those things are the names given when the geography of your witness is now defined but that your assignment is to be the validator of a claim the validator of a claim witnesses now the bible says in acts chapter 1 when you go to verse 8 again it says you will be witnesses unto me and then it begins to list different geographic areas jerusalem judea samaria for years i wondered why he left that scripture until i found out look up please i found out that it was not just territorial or geographic allocations alone are we together that as god deals with us he now begins to send us to different geographic territories where the witness of the christ is re is needed this is what your pastor and many of the people call the seven mountains they are the geography of witness are we together now they are not your assignment your assignment is to be a witness but they define the geography the jurisdiction of your assignment that means I can be a politician and once you think I am just a diplomat and a politician I am a witness I am aware that I'm within this space to promote represent and defend everything God are you getting my point now that means that as a politician I will still pray the same prayer of a preacher because we are really doing the same thing when a preacher is fasting i will be fasting too i will not just say fast for us uh -uh. when it was time to fast esther was fasting in the palace mordecai was fasting outside the gate and all the jews were also fasting there was no curriculum allocated for a special person in the palace the same fast at the gates the palace and all through shushan there was a fast because they were all witnesses are we together so i am a witness not just a man of god ministry of the word and the spirit happens to be the geography allocated for my witness and so now god begins to customize his dealings to be able to help me to be effective within the geography but when we come together like this it is a convergence of witnesses men who have come to draw strength and power and intelligence because hell continues to bring out cases against the integrity of god cases against the love of god and we need a convergence that builds us together to receive fire to receive grace so that we now go back to our geographies of assignment as a politician for instance you are in a position where people can plot all kinds of things against you and you do not know so you come for a conference like this and the holy spirit sees what should be in your life to make you an effective witness and he finds out for instance that the prophetic dimension is barren in your life this is why your fortitude to perceive evil is not there and is affecting you politically so you are not just going to come and receive a prophecy to rise politically you will obtain a grace for the prophetic as though a prophet but you are still a politician now watch this you are sitting in a parliament and you can discern deception because you are a witness the training that daniel had in babylon was the training that you would give a man of god not a politician but there was no mention of ministry he used that training for politics purely Kenya, are we together but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost 
is come upon you that means when the holy spirit comes upon you the holy spirit begins an activity in your life please look up he begins an activity within you and that that activity will open you up like a vessel ready for his power and his grace and that when it comes upon you you are called a witness it is not the word witness is not just something that you get by inheritance it's a reward for staying with god remember it gives a condition you shall receive meaning you can reject it when you stay with the holy ghost and he walks with you he recalibrates your spiritual understanding then he will invest the power and the grace of god upon you that activity will give you a new name you are called a witness a witness with a throne that backs him and all the equippings listen every witness has something that will always be demanded it's called a token of truthfulness the name is evidence write it down there is no witness in the court of law that is a true witness who does not have an evidence and evidence is a token of validation is a token of truthfulness if you claim that you are a witness then creation will demand to pass the test to prove to creation you are a witness they will ask you where is your evidence if i tell pastor how long have you been with your dear wife and we run a test here we will tell him pastor we are going to test you we will not just take it that this is your wife you will need to give us some evidences and he will call her a name and tell us something there is something if i tell my wife she must laugh and we say try it and he says it and she laughs we say you got it this is your wife when people lose money or lose properties they say come with proof of ownership come with an evidence so you don't just show up and say creation hear me i'm born again they say many have come like you if you are a witness where is your evidence I come as a man of God I had an encounter in the secret place they say nonsense that is your experience what is the evidence God called me to be a businessman and liberate the economy of Africa stories what is your evidence hmm. an evidence is the end of argument the reason why there is a lot of preaching is because we are using it to cover lack of evidence the advancement of the kingdom was not supposed to be this hard it is our lack of substantiating the truth is it making sense what i'm saying we can apologize after the meeting and hug one another at lord lunch or something but what makes you think members should come to your church just because you said you are called no what makes you think clients should come to your business just because you have a product 7.2 billion no you need evidence there has to be a token of truthfulness that will compel all and sundry he said rabbi john 3 verse 1 we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him we know forget all the noise we make in the day nicodemus was saying we know you have to be a man sent from god we have seen the tokens we have seen you demonstrate possibilities that is not affordable within the world of men Time will fail me hebrew says to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shot the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life hmm. the evidence is what creation is waiting for romans chapter 8 from verse 18 i reckon paul is talking to the church in rome i reckon means i come to terms with this fact that the sufferings of this present time he says is not worthy to be 
compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaited not the explanation not the excuses but the manifestation of the sons of god now listen very carefully the next verse says for creation this is the case we are to correct that creation was made subject to vanity is the word corruption not willingly but by reason of him who subjected the same in hope 21 it says 21 please give it to us for we know that it says because creation will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god that means there is a case creation is crying and say where are they we keep hearing prophetically that there are a people who are a representation of the life the power the grace the kingdom of god we didn't see them in the sermons we didn't see them in the business exposes where are they and if they are here where is the the token of truthfulness where is the evidence when jesus in luke chapter 4 when you read from verse 14 the bible says he stood up for to read the prophecy of isaiah he was reading the messianic prophecy of isaiah 60 61 and the bible says when he began to read this is what he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because because not for nothing because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek are we together he had sent me remember we are sent to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to declare the year of God's uh, acceptable year of the Lord and his year of vengeance. Then he closed it and said, This day, Kalu Sabarutiata, this day, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. But a man shows up and says, I make it today, this day. Is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? And they were looking at him. He spotted a man with a withered hand and said, let me show you I am the evidence, a revelation of God. Stretch forth your hand. Listen to me, let me tell you, our civilization now is a civilization of proofs and intelligence. The civilization of our parents were civilizations of loyalty. Whether they believed or not, they followed suit. But this generation, people will ask questions. Nobody will follow blindly. Hmm. If you said he put an anointing for wealth, where is it? Where is the evidence? It is true that things take time, but forever is failure. The end of faith is a manifestation. When you plant, you are patient for one year. Is it, is it not so? God brought us here to shake us in this conference from head to toe. And put something upon our lives. The talking is too much. Too much. Too much. Too much of talking. God can do this. Too much of writing books. God has done this. Too much of this. God can change your life. I'm not being sarcastic. When you follow me, you know I love the body of Christ. I'm sent to the body. I do not speak in any way to resent. It is to challenge. The bride that will make the husband proud is not Vashti. Vashti has failed. Esther, where are you? Ahazaros is searching for his bride and hear me the condition to be Ahazaros bride is not beauty is you must stay with Haggai for one year and rub the ointment Haggai gave Esther an ointment to rub non-stop for one year listen to what I tell you my brothers and my sisters I came here with an apostolic and a prophetic voice God is shifting people please give me volume sir listen to what I tell you enough of stories i sense the anointing of the holy ghost here now please listen i will not take our time this morning just play class the simba for me please my friend listen to me man of god hear me the way you are doing ministry you will be frustrated you will only get angry and hate other men of god 
you are a witness but you need evidence enough of grammar and stories listen to me he said when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech the exegesis of truth must be backed up by power from heaven you are a businessman listen when you speak and it happens then men will listen to you and believe you the lord is doing something prophetic in this Ruach conference it's a conference of the spirit of god please listen to me very carefully i'm about to pray for you this morning we are going to have extended sessions alongside all the servants of god but you must be tired of where you are and say lord i'm tired of stories i'm currently writing a book now whose results i cannot prove in my life i'm about to start a tv program whose convictions i'm not even sure of it is not difficult to exalt the christ within a territory when there are witnesses our fathers who have come and left they came as witnesses not men of god the son gracefully our bishop his father archbishop benson idahosa came and shook the territory of africa if god is god let him be god elijah said if baal is god how long shall we continue to contend no sir if god prospers let our lives show it the prophet said by this time tomorrow and the economy of a territory changed and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we generation that must bring the kind of demonstration of the reality of the life of Christ the reality not by preaching not by healing by being witnesses in all the spheres Joel said blow the trumpet in Zion sound the alarm upon my holy mountain and he begins to talk about a generation of men terrible and great before them is as a garden of Eden behind them a desolate wilderness if you are in ministry please hear me it is time that we back up our spiritual communications with understanding that is not of this realm and the evidence of the reality of the life and the power of God men in business men in politics let God be true in Kenya. Let God be true at this conference. And that every man be a liar. Hallelujah. Now I'm not going to take our time this morning. But while I just stood here, I saw eagles. Now every time the Lord shows me eagles, is the spirit of revelation. And I saw the number 10. That grace is coming on someone now. Please bring them out. Bring them out right now. If there are ushers, please just bring them here. I want to pray for you. Shilas Kobradizia. Shigradiziana Haskavaritas. Please bring them out if there are ushers. The spirit of revelation. Harude Shilakata is giving the eyes that see insight, illumination into scripture. And we will never settle for less. Shemana Tena Matianana. Is someone praying in the spirit? The time has come from Africa. Awake down that sleepers and Christ will give you light. Please bring them out. 
se parata en prequete de cosociata a dimension that God is bringing in Ruach conference where men and women must step into levels in the spirit it's not just a conference to be excited it's an impartation of spiritual possibilities shifting you from one dimension in the spirit even to the other it says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is When we know there's more that's found in you, we can never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Ali Baruta Shala Bradigesia. Now hear me. Listen to me. The Bible says, for our light affliction, hear me, it is hard. The training of a witness is a training that only the grace of God can grant you. Many of you are in seasons in your life right now where you do not even understand what is happening to you. When God is silent, I want you to know that he is speaking. His silence is a voice. He is saying, my son, keep on. You are a man of God you love God but that grace and power is not yet in your ministry the silence of God is a voice he says stay stay it is they that wait upon the Lord that will renew their strength you are a businessman and as it were the lines are not yet falling in pleasant places the silence of God is a voice he speaks for our light affliction which worketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory I came to show you there was a woman from God who passed through a family as the fifth born in Kenya don't be confused about your being a fifth born and speaking by the spirit it is not an afterthought of a man and a woman sent from God lift your hands step into a new level in the spirit that man you will rise in a level of grace that you have never seen before men come from God men don't come from wombs men are framed in wombs they come from god they carry ancient possibilities where you are right now all over please lift your voice in one minute raise a cry to heaven lord i'm available it's time to be a witness whether you are a businessman a worshiper a man and woman in ministry a media expert an IT expert pray like a man of God are there men and women of prayer in Kenya are there there was a man sent from God his name is John the same came for a witness of the light that through his witness men might believe hey. hallelujah listen to me let me use one person here just to make an illustration any one of you please come two of you sir you can come to watch this never forget this example this is god this is satan this is man God speaks through man I love you Satan afflicts man you lied a miracle happens to man as a reply so God is searching for men 
a body has thou prepared. Hear me, Kenya. God is not searching for restaurants and malls. He's searching for men. Men. That when I talk about the wealth, he says, go up the mountain. Bring wood. Bring me a house. You don't find wood up the mountain. You find wood in a forest. So when he says, go up the mountain, climb the system, enter the system, bring wood. From that wood, build me a house that I will be glorified. We are rounding up. Let me explain to you the attacks that characterize your bet. Now it makes sense. It was the fight for a witness. The academic challenges that you had while in school that made people call you a black sheep. It was not a battle about you. The mysterious sicknesses that would not let you go. It was a peeping into prophecy. A witness is imagined. Many people died because Moses was born. Many people died because Jesus was born. Every time witnesses are born, there are contentions. Listen, interpret reality from the lens of the spirit. I now see the reason why every time I want to do something, there is a strange attack around it. It's not about what I want to do. It's about the agenda in the heart of the doer. That in and through what I do, Christ will be lifted. No wonder I've been trying to obtain the certification. And Satan has used systems to fight my company. It's not just about the company. He knows that when you obtain the wealth, you have enough kingdom understanding to frontier the purposes of God. So he will fight it. Denounce God and you will watch your company grow overnight. It was not about company. It's about your heart. But in this conference, we have come to call the devil a liar. But not just to call him, we have come to prove that Satan is a liar. John chapter 1 and verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness. Not discuss, not suggest. If it is light, it will shine. Let me tell you this. I stand by God and I speak to someone right now. By the spirit of the living God. This evening would not be full until your testimony starts. I'm speaking to you by the spirit. Listen, you see, before you believe a man, find out about him. God puts his manifesto before you and says, go back to history. What did I say before and what happened? Let me speak again to someone. In the name of Jesus, this conference is the conference where you will meet the anointing for your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is the first session. I have to respect the time. But there is a call. Once you just say, I am a businessman, you will cheat yourself from all of the, the positionings that will make you an effective witness. Once you listen, do you know that a woman's ministry can be to give birth? That's it. Not to preach, to give birth. An example, Mary. Another example, my mother. That a woman's ministry on earth can finish in nine months. And Satan will fight that womb because of what is coming out from it. So now, you now see why the devil tries to put barrenness. You now see why Satan tries to put high blood pressure. It's not about sickness and healing. It's about a statement to thwart God's purposes. But let God be true, Kenya. And let Satan, let the devil alone be a liar. listen to me do not miss any part of this conference whatever it will take to call anybody around Kenya this is not a church thing this is God coming to his people are we together now every time God wants to touch Israel he does not call Israel he calls Jacob 
and when he calls Jacob the word he has put on Jacob is always for Israel it was only one man that saw the burning bush the rest did not need to climb up they just needed to look at the man who had seen the burning bush to have the same experience there is fire burning here at Ruach conference and it's important for you to let everybody this is not some church invitation no some of you know a preacher who has been fasting and praying tell them your prayer has been answered come come and take something solid come and receive a grace you are a business person come and receive a grace when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion he said so even Zion can be under captivity although she is the Zion of God he said we were like them that dream and they said among the hidden the Lord had done great things for them he says the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad then he says turn again our captivity like the streams of the south the Negev God is able to turn the lives of people I pray for you in the name of Jesus let a hunger from this morning conference a hunger for spiritual things a hunger for accurate spiritual understanding a hunger for true apostolic Christianity may it come upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ and like I prophesied I agree with you by evening many of you will return with strange testimonies as tokens of the hand of God in the name of Jesus we activate the angelic on this prophecy we bring a spiritual climate I speak to the two leaf gates of Kenya I speak by the spirit that in honor of this conference and in the name of the God of Jeshuron the one who rides upon the wings of the wind let there be strange angelic activities within this city strange miracles encounters restorations in the name of Jesus listen as soon as Saul set his eyes on Samuel the donkey started going back home he, he did not ask the donkey to go back there are possibilities that happen because of the spiritual climate created lift your voice everyone and pray in one minute it must be for me as spoken by the word of the Lord by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. 
Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, 